Well, hello everyone. How's everybody doing today? I hope you're doing good. All right. If you are seeing this screen, that means you are looking at my cell phone and you can see my information from LV5048 on it. You can also see that I'm not on a Wi-Fi. I'm actually on a 4G. So I'm hooking from outside world through my phone into my LV 5048s looking at my data. So that's a good thing. I have achieved something. In this uh, do-it-yourself project to have everything kind of done by myself. All right. Um, continuation. Now, on this screen over here, which is in front of me, you can see the data from LV 5048s. I'm currently running on batteries and battery voltage is about 53 volts, current home load is 158. Uh, over there on the right side you will see a consumption. It says monthly consumption and daily consumption. It's, it's even because I started a database today. Anyways, those numbers will be different every, every single day because we are measuring monthly uh, consumption. Uh, of energy okay so today so far uh, home has used without air conditionings 13.96 kilowatt hours um, the project has moved on good one more time thank you Jay Blance this has been one hell of a ride uh, we have fixed he has fixed a lot of issues basically it's 99% work from him and maybe less than 1% from me testing this and whatnot. Uh, so let's see what we did. Um, we have solved some issues with the database. We'll go into details for, uh, in regards to that. Uh, we have, uh, in, we can now incorporate use of Chronograph 2 instead of just Grafana. So I would appreciate if any of you know how to use any of these visualization uh, visualization software if you guys could help us out and maybe adjust this and maybe if you know how to work with the influx DB it would be great too um, so we can get this even better project I think is about 95% done everything is stable and it's working and as I mentioned uh, in the beginning of video, I can access my data anywhere. From work, from mall, if it ever gets open, from post office, from here, from there, I can access it. I achieved that much. Uh, all of my data is stored personally in my house on my server. I am lucky enough to, to have a permanent IP address from my internet service provider and I was able to set it up, to set up a server in a house. It is so straightforward and it's super easy with, these, with this software. Uh, now, let's talk about what do we need for this project. In the last video, we mentioned that we need a Raspberry Pi. We do need a Raspberry Pi. You can get them at the Micro Center, you can get them off of Amazon. Uh, the cheapest model uh, Raspberry Pi for Model B with two gigabytes of RAM is thirty-five bucks. So I don't think that's awfully too much. I think that serial USB to serial cable costs more, but you can use a USB cable that is provided with your with your uh, LB5048 when you buy to connect to Raspberry Pi, so you wouldn't have to spend money on it. Uh, when it comes to Raspberry Pi and its Desbian operating system or whatever it is, uh, you need to learn a little bit about Linux. However, I think Jay Blance <clears throat> has managed to put everything kind of straightforward on his GitHub page. Uh, once again, thank you, Jay Blance. Uh, he has set up everything that we need over here. Um, in the uh, on his page where we can see uh, 
what is it uh, on his page which says MPP solar inverter Python package that goes onto your Raspberry Pi. You install that. You have to set up. <clears throat> you have to set a couple more things: MQTT, Influx, and Grafana. We click on that page. Uh, he has made this diagram over here. What needs to be installed and why it needs to be installed. He make it. He made it real easy for us guys. You, you just have to have some basic knowledge to install this by yourself um, if you can't then maybe you can find somebody make a to make a SD card for you and you can boot it up from yours um, I don't know what else to tell you but it's it's not that hard that's all I can tell you I never touched Linux before in my life until three weeks ago four maybe and I was able to get this far in this project in this short of a time I just couldn't wait for other people to figure this out so I decided to get this kind of this project going by myself and I'm lucky that I found Jay Blantz that already had majority of the stuff done uh, this is all the information is here what you need and how you need it now I don't want to make this video short I'm going to try to keep it around 10 minutes uh, when it comes to other stuff that it's needed for programming you will need influx DB um, I'm, I'm currently using version 1.8.0 follow installation instructions that you can find on the internet how to install it and how to set it up uh, this visualization uh, software over here called chronograph uh, it's not as good as grafana but i'm going to play with it too because it has some other options that might be of help to me um now what to what to say in summary in summary the project is 95 percent done um you have to learn a little bit you have to get raspberry pi you have to get you have to get um, some cables for connections if you if you depending which route you go um, you have to learn a little bit about you know following instructions uh, in linux not everything is click like in windows so you have to type in a little bit a couple of commands install everything but i think on my last SD card that I prepared for uh, for a Raspberry Pi, I think I had everything done within 15 minutes. Okay, so I don't think it should be that hard. We can fit a whole lot more information here. So let me show you. So let's say we want to add another another panel to this dashboard, and then let's go from here. And if we go here select our database and then our MPP solar measurement guys we can access every piece of information from powerwalls okay this is all the serial information that comes out and on top of it we can do commands uh, from uh, from Raspberry Pi we can do commands too like we see right here when I switched to the batteries and I had person ask I think it was LNX Pro can we program the Raspberry Pi to send commands to switch between the utilities and batteries yes you can we got it right here buddy and let's see how does it work so I'm gonna switch back to charge up the batteries so we change a simple command and right now but before we do that let me show you this we'll go back here and then we're going to switch it back to there we go we switch back acknowledge command switch back to uh, grid power and it's going to start charging the battery here shortly You'll see it. There we 
go. The batteries are being charged right now. There it is. We are charging at 112 amp. There is a little bit of a delay until information gets to the database and where I programmed it. So having some people help out on this, it would be great. So we can make it good for everybody. But in any case, I'm at minute 11. I want to keep it short. Project is there. It's beautiful. It's working. And I think we all can benefit from it. Other inverters can be used with this as long as they have compatible, you know, compatible uh, programming language with with what we have, MPP Solar. I think a bunch of other inverters carry the same brand name, carry a different brand name, but they are pretty much the same inverters. They probably can use it too. Okay, visit Jay Blance's page and. Uh, see more information there for it okay guys i'll talk to you guys soon later